on this episode of Fish Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> we have a rush on. Fish on. Nice fish. Jakob takes on an armor-plated adversary with a deadly reputation. Wow. And a mouth full of razor-sharp fangs. Try to go fast. The alligator guard. Coming, 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 coming. Be careful. It's a classic showdown in the deep south. A test of will. Texas style. <laughs> This is Jakob Wagner, extreme anger. With multiple world records under his belt, he's tracking down the planet's biggest weather goliaths. Go, 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 it's a big fish. On a mission to find and protect the last remaining freshwater giants, nothing can stop the fish warrior. Extreme angler Jakob Wagner's traveled to the world's most remote and exotic locations in search of the biggest fish. But this expedition brings the Czech Republic native to a destination more foreign than any other. Houston, Texas. I'm a little bit lost here. It's a uh, it's really huge town. And I wouldn't expect that I will be able to find one of the freshwater giants so close to, to Houston, Trinity River. I'm in Texas because I would love to catch alligator gar. It's uh, one of the biggest freshwater fish in the uh, United States. I really like alligator gar because it's a prehistoric fish. The body of this animal looks like a fish, and the head and especially the teeth of this fish, it looks like alligator. In hopes of locating a true giant, over 100 pounds, he's enlisted the help of world-renowned alligator gar fishing guide, Kirk Kirkland. I'm Captain Kirk Kirkland, guide here on the Trinity River for alligator gar. I've been doing this for about 15 years. He's an amazing fisherman and amazing guide, and he is uh, the best alligator gar fisherman and guide in the world. Jakob and Kirk set out on the Trinity River. Let's get a big one! Home to venomous copperheads and deadly American alligators, the Trinity winds more than 700 miles from northern Texas into the Gulf of Mexico. Its deep, murky waters provide the perfect habitat for alligator gar to hide and hunt. The alligator gar is an extremely fast predator. He's able to chase down almost any fish in the river. They're really one long, big muscle connected to a really big, powerful tail. With tough, bony skulls and armor-like interlocking ganoid scales, these carnivores can grow as long as 10 feet, weighing more than 300 pounds. The shape of alligator gar, it's like a torpedo with huge fins. The jaws are really powerful. They have a lot of huge, incredibly sharp teeth. Two complete sets of upper fangs ensure prey are immobilized with no hope of escape. Alligator gar anatomy has changed little since the time of the dinosaurs, when its early ancestors inhabited many parts of the world. But today, this prehistoric fish can only be found in North America. They're one of the last remaining dinosaurs we have left on Earth, and uh, you know we're lucky to have them right here in Texas. But Jakob's not sure huge alligator gar can still be found in Texas. Alligator gar is absolutely amazing creature, and we have to protect these creatures because they are unique, and if we keep killing them here in Texas, we will kill them all. He fears the biggest of the species may already be victims of the fish's rising popularity among sports fishermen. Smaller, younger gar may not survive long enough to grow into the mammoth predators Jakob seeks. Is fresh bait always better or it can be a little bit stinky? No, fresh bait's always better. Because some fish species like stinky bait. Or do not like old bait. Yeah. Perfect. To catch an elusive fish in murky waters, the men use special equipment. Kirk's secret weapon? Bite alarms. We uh, set these rods on these European bite alarms. You set like four rods along the shore, you can spread your baits out further apart, and then you just set in the shade with a receiver. As soon as the fish pulls, we know which one's running. Jakob sets his four rods along the bank. Using Kirk's radio receivers to listen for any sign of activity, the men move the boat into position. Now we wait. While waiting, Kirk gives Jakob an idea just how dangerous these predators can be. I had a lady that got cut fishing with me. She had to have 65 stitches. 65 stitches. Yeah, I cut her on the inside of the arm here, all the way down. And then I had another client that was holding a fish and dropped it on his leg, and it cut his leg open, and he had to have about 68 stitches. So they have some teeth, so you got to be careful. 
The, the float is moving. The float is moving. Yep. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Alligator guard jaws are so tough and bony, it's nearly impossible to hook one in the mouth. Snagging one takes serious patience and skill. Yep, yep, yep. Grab it. Good catch. Okay. If you fish for any other freshwater fish on our planet, if you get a take, you can set the hook nearly immediately. But with alligator guard, it's a different story. They'll stop, and they'll lay on the bottom, and then they'll swallow the bait. It's a lot safer to hook these fish deeper in the body than it is to try to hook them in the mouth, because a lot of times you'll hook the fish in the throat when you try to hook it shallow. It takes the delicate touch of an experienced angler. Pull too soon, and he could harm the fish or lose the catch. Timing is everything. Good job. I'm going to jump. I really like fighting with alligator gar because it's extremely powerful fish, fast fish, and they jump like crazy. I'm going to jump. Sometimes they can jump even in the boat, so you have to be real careful. Whoa. Are you ready, Kirk? A snout full of cutting teeth make landing the feisty alligator gar a tricky business. But Kirk has a trick to wrangle the fighting fish in true Texan style. He lassos it. It's not a monster, but nice fish. Kirk cuts the line. Knowing the fish's powerful stomach acids will dissolve the small bronze hook in just about a week's time. Do you see the two holes in the end of the nose? These two holes. Yes. This fish has a primitive lung. That lets this fish live in really low oxygen water, so this fish has been able to survive where a lot of other fish would die. An evolutionary advantage, alligator gar have specially modified swim bladders, capable of absorbing oxygen outside of the water. Mm -hmm. But this remarkable trait can be a blessing and a curse. Okay, he's ready to okay. go. Okay, goodbye. Thank you very much. Further downriver, Jakob sees firsthand how the gar's air-breathing ability can also leave them dangerously exposed. Coming to the surface for air, alligator gar make easy targets for a controversial fishing method, bow hunting. Sport fishing is fine, but we should think before we go bow hunting. Bow hunting is a bane for catch and release fishermen like Jakob. Pierced by an arrow, a fish has no chance for survival. You can see where is the problem with bow hunters, because if they see the fish on the surface, they can shoot them. They love to bask in the sun, they love to come up and breathe air. That makes them vulnerable, you know. In spite of discouraging signs, the species may be in trouble. Jakob and Kirk end the day still determined to find a truly giant alligator gar. On the second morning of the expedition, Jakob and Kirk team up with Texas Parks and Wildlife biologist Dave Buckmeyer, an alligator gar expert. Morning, Kirk. Hey, how you doing, man? Good, how Good are you doing? Again. Great. This is Jakob Wagner from Texas. Hi, Jakob. Jakob. Dave nice Buckmeyer. You, Dave. Nice to meet you. Hi. Jakob wants to gain insight on local efforts to protect the alligator gar population. Come on. Dave works with local anglers to tag alligator gar, tracking the fish's growth and migration in hopes of safeguarding the species. We need to know more about these fish and then also regulate anglers that pursue them. We push for that because that's the attention the fish need to actually be protected. While alligator gar are not yet classified as an endangered species here in Texas, local wildlife officials are concerned about the fish's ability to survive and grow big. Under pressure from human development and too many fishermen unwilling to practice catch and release, the species may be in danger. They haven't always been such a popular fish. Even biologists historically tried to eradicate gars from a lot of our systems with the thought that they had some impact on other desirable fishes of the time. Alligator gar are now protected by Texas state law, limiting anglers to one gar per day. Still, it's unclear if this limit can protect the largest specimens. We just need a little bit more information about how many can be harvested without hurting the population. I think that taking research of Dave is really important, especially for future generation of alligator gar, and as well for fishermen, because we can learn a lot of things from biologists about fishing. Heading out to the first fishing spot of the day, the team makes a disturbing discovery. It looks like he's been there a little while for sure. Probably bow hunting, what do you think? It's a possibility. You see here? Yeah. 
that's definitely a hole. Yep. It's shot in from this side. Yep. Look at it, Doug. It's definitely a hole. Okay. It went in from this side. You can see where the puncture went in. Here is the first hole, and here is the second hole. It's very bad that someone is shooting this beautiful fish with bow and arrow. I think it's totally stupid, and especially if they don't take the meat to eat it. I think it's just wasting a beautiful animal. There's no reason why we should kill these animals only for fun. I think it's very sad because we live in 21st century. It's very sad. Jakob and his team head further up the Trinity River to one of Kirk's favorite spots to catch and tag big alligator gar. But what suddenly captures Jakob's attention is something so small, it weighs almost nothing. Okay, got it. Beautiful small alligator gar. They've come here. Have a look at this. Beautiful fish. This fish is okay. not very old. Yep, I got it. Okay. That fish is not very old. This one's probably just absorbed the yolk sac, and he's just now probably starting to feed on little plankton and stuff like that. Four or five day old fish. This fish has small ear bones. They're called otoliths, and that's what we use to age fish. And with other species anyway, and what we're hoping with these is that we can remove those and figure out how old this fish is. And then we can back calculate exactly when that fish was spawned and what the conditions were. So that's, you know, very useful information for us. I'm always so amazed that from something so small can grow something so big. The tiniest catch of the expedition will go back to the lab for microscopic study. I don't want to hurt you. You can okay. drop him in there, he'll be good. Oh, later. There yeah. You go. And it's swimming. Jakob heads back out on the hunt for bigger gar. Okay. New place, new luck. Okay, hold on, Jakob. Here we go again. Let's hope it's a big fish. Hoping for his behemoth, Jakob sets the hook. Hold on, Jakob. It's going to the trees. Yeah. I'm trying to get him from there. Yeah. It's fine. But this time, he challenges Dave to reel in the fish. Okay, come and try it. How about I catch this one and you tag it? Okay. If Dave's not careful, he could lose Jakob's fish and his chance to tag another gar for research. It's definitely spunky. Strong enough. He's coming. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Yeah, Definitely over 40 pounds. He's a little bit better than the other one. Plus to 50 pounds. That's about what he is. Yeah. Whoa, I mean, he mad. Yeah, very didn't like the lasso. Extreme angler Jakob Wagner helps scientist yeah. Dave Buckmeyer bring oh. in another awesome gar. We're going to get this behind the peck fans on this fish so you don't hurt his gills. Yep. Nah, yeah. uh, but an even greater okay. risk than losing the catch <laughs> could be dragging okay. the dangerous predator What's into the boat. Legs? What's your feet? What's your legs? When you pull alligator gar into the boat, you have to be really careful because they get absolutely <laughs> mad. <laughs> So it's always better to uh, keep distance. Where you go, Dave? Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Biggest one of the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're ready to learn how to tag one of these, Jacob? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Show I'll... me how and... <laughs> Easy, buddy. Your we'll fish get... is very nasty. We'll get you out of here soon enough. So, and I'll... Let Hold me... the fish, please. Yes. Uh, there you go. Now push in. Yeah. Click it. Yeah. Turn it. Turn halfway. Go. That's fine. Okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. And there you can see the number is 1782? Yes, yeah, 1782. And on that side it says, if, if captured, call, and there's a phone number. Well, the reason we're tagging these fish is if an angler catches one, they can call the phone number that's on this tag and report whether or not they harvested it or if they released it. And from that, we can start getting some estimates of just how many fish are being harvested every year. Dave, can we release the fish right now? Um, let's get a quick measurement. And release it. Yeah. So it's well still up. That's good. Okay, 60 inches. 60 inches? Okay, yep. that's a pretty good one. The girth? And we'll do the girth right here around the <laughs> 24 and a half inches. At five feet long, this huge alligator gar is still small for the species. Hold the head, you're the fisherman, I will hold the tail. No problem. Right. Okay. Nice fish. Yeah, definitely around 50 pounds. Oh, thank you, goodbye. So if someone else catches that fish, or Kirk catches that fish again, we'll know where it was originally caught, and that helps us figure out how many fish are in this river. And I hope if they catch it, they release it like we do. But if they don't, and they report it to us, at least we know that it was harvested, and that's another piece of information we need to know is what the exploitation rate is on these fish. So congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good job tagging the fish. Yeah, thank you. It's early morning on the third day of a seven-day mission. Turn the good rocks. In these 
unfamiliar waters, Jakob's success greatly depends on the experience of his guide. We've really struggled two or three days because we've had takes, but every time we pull one up, he's 30 pounds or 40 pounds instead of the, you know, the seven foot one or seven and a half foot one that we've been looking for. It's many times like this. You say, okay, let's change the spot, and two seconds later, beep, fish on. From years of study, Kirk knows large alligator gar hunt for prey along this bend in the river. You see these, these sandbars, I like to fish the edge of these, the, that's a deeper hole right in here and it comes up to about this corner, starts getting shallow. And what they'll do is come back up these bars and start patrolling looking for fish. But as the men wait patiently for a strike, conditions change for the worse. We have all our lines in the water and suddenly it starts raining and raining and raining and that's not good for alligator gar. That's the end for today at least for this morning, because alligator guards just hate rain. They don't hunt. Fishing is definitely very difficult. But just as Jakob decides to pack up, a bite. Yeah, fish on, fish on. We have a take. We go for the rod. Take is really solid. It looks like a good fish. Got it. Yeah, this fish is running at least half a mile already. Sporadic showers turn into a heavy downpour as Jakob waits for his moment to strike. Get ready, Kirk. Right. I'm ready. Let's see. I set the hook and it's nice fish. It's yeah. a good fish, Jakob. It's a good fish. It's good fish, Kirk. <laughs> Do you know how we call this? Fishing in the rain. <laughs> it's around the boat. It's a bigger fish. It's just under the boat right now. Yeah, nice fish. Short but very fat. Very fat fish. Whoa. Back up. Oh. Finally, the catch tires. But there's still danger. Last wing of toothy angry yep. gar requires serious focus. Hang on. They slip this down over peck fins so you don't get any gills. You slip it down, wrap right past the pecs, okay, suck it, it up. Woo -hoo. We got it. Cowboy style. That's it. We're in the boat. Watch out, y'all. Up, up in the boat. Watch out. Woo! <laughs> yeah, that's the All right. Fish. All right, buddy. It's raining a lot, but this is a good fish. Fish it in the rain. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be tough. You have to be tough as well. <laughs> I'm totally wet, but it doesn't matter. I feel really good. I have my alligator gar, so now I need to catch only a bigger one. On 60, 65 pounds. It's not a bad fish, better than nothing. With his sights set on finding a gar twice as big, Jakob releases the fish back into the river. Safe. <laughs> the two head back while the rain continues to pound. But arriving at the boat ramp, Jakob and Kirk face their toughest challenge of the day. Looks like impossible. I think there's no way how we can get the boat out of the water. It's just too muddy. Too muddy everywhere and it's too, it's too steep. Man! Careful if it starts sliding, it's gonna pop. Okay. You have to use uh, the winch to get it back. Otherwise, there's no way. Okay. Soaked and exhausted, the men struggled for three hours. <laughs> Just four days left, Jakob and Kirk are back on the Trinity River. On the hunt for a 100-pound super predator, Jakob fears man may have wiped out the biggest specimens in Texas waters. Hoping to give Jakob some better luck, Kirk decides to shake things up. My dad's going to join us today on the river, and uh, 
He's gonna bring a barbecue grill and bring mm. dinner. <laughs> what See? about a little competition between three of us? Well, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be fair. Because, because he would win. <laughs> of course, he's the oldest. He's the oldest. Hello there. Hi. I'm Jakub. Barry Kirk. <laughs> okay. Nice to meet you. Nice, I heard nice, a lot of stories you. about you. Maybe some of them are good. Yeah, all of them were good. <laughs> yeah. We are going to have a small fishing competition today between three of us. We know that you are going to win, but anyway, you have to show us how to catch a big guard today. I'll try. <laughs> okay. And if we have a big fish on, guess who is going to take the rod? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, Byron, see you behind the corner. With three men competing, hopefully they'll bring in the monster Jakob's been after. Let me show you how it's done in Texas. That's the cast. It's the money shot, as we call it in Texas. Come on, don't be shy. Jakob gets the first strike. Ugh, I would try, Kurt. Yeah. But the gar spits the bait. Well, it's a good fish, Byron. Well, yeah, it's a good fish. Why didn't you catch it? <laughs> Hang on. Ah. <laughs> Kirk, your run is running. Kirk is up next. I like this chair. Come on, come on. Uh -oh. Here it goes, Jacob. Follow it. I'm going to set the hook. Yeah, that was a big one, Kirk. For you, it's fine enough, I mean. Ah. Oh. So the next fish of Kirk is around maybe 15 pounds. Hang on, I'll catch it with one hand. Yeah, I tell you, this is going to be your record. Oh, Kirk! I don't want to fool with one of them little things like them. Oh, it got away! Oh, man, you lost it. You had your chance, and now I'm going to rope you. <laughs> so now it's your turn. You that can catch a big one. I have no problem with it, Byron. You know, you know, catch a big one. I'm just going to go sit in that boat and sit in the shade. Y'all can just go hang out by yourselves. <laughs> the bite alarm sounds. And Byron has a chance to lock the competition. Oh, look at this. That fish is going like crazy. Fish is gone. She's gone. She turned the leaf. Did she drop the bait? Yeah. Byron, he's really unlucky. I can tell you straight away which one is that. Woo! <laughs> hey, that's not fair. <laughs> If Jakob lands this guard, fish on. he could win the contest. Nope, not a very small fish. It's good. Yeah, around 50 pounds. Oh, nice fish. All right. Yeah. Man, that's a good fish. Oh my gosh, 60 and a half. Okay, Baron, what do you think? Not bad. Let's measure the girth. 26 inches. Jakob inserts a numbered tag to advance vital species research. 1788. Eight. It's not a legendary sized alligator gar, but the catch is big enough to win the contest. Hi, hey Baron. Where's that? That's the fish. Thank you very much, and see you next time. Zero, zero, one. Oh, congratulations, buddy. You Thank won. you very much. Thank you very much. It, it wasn't the biggest fish in the river, but still, it was the biggest fish Thank of today. You. Thank you, Baron. It was a pleasure to fish with you today. Thank you. Well, Jakob, since you're the winner. I know you are sad, but you know, it's only fishing, man. I guess you get to eat first. It looks good. It smells even better. Taste it and see. Okay. Mmm, very good. This has my special sauce on it. The slime from the gar. <laughs> I think you're a better cooler than fisherman. <laughs> you need a big boat. Yes, I do. The next morning, in an effort to better understand the effects of fishing on his monster opponents, Jakob Wagner teams up with Sam Johnston, a scientist who employs a high-tech system to track the movements of fish in the wild. There's a lot of questions about what happens when you catch a large fish and then release it into the water. And it's important to know whether or not uh, these fish uh, are surviving and then what's happening to them. So uh, if we put a tag in the fish, after we catch it, we can actually follow it and see exactly where it goes. And that will help us understand the fish a little bit better. Sam's computerized system uses underwater listening devices called hydrophones. Like sonar on a submarine, 
hydrophones hear the faint signal emitted by small acoustic tags inserted in a fish. This is the acoustic tag? Are you serious? Such a small thing. It is a small thing, but we should be able to hear it in this entire area. But there's one very big unknown. This is the first time that we've ever done uh, alligator gar in the wild. The team deploys four hydrophones, two on either side of the river. The, the fish can be anywhere in this area and we'll be able to track it. While Sam connects the hydrophone cables to his equipment, Jakob and Kirk get to work catching an alligator gar test subject. Let's get a big one. Ah, it's on. Okay, Kirk. Look. Ah, nice splash. <laughs> Feel it? Oh. Let's tag it. Let's go ahead and tag it. Is it a good size for you? Definitely. Yeah, I'm still hoping for a bigger one. Oh. 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 <laughs> He's very mad. I hold a fish with your fingers because this fish is really, really dangerous and we have to be careful because this fish has too many sharp teeth. For the tracking system to work, the acoustic tag needs to be placed inside the angry alligator gar's flesh shredding jaws. So we developed a, uh, just a short little tube with a piston inside where we can insert the tag directly into the gar's stomach. Now here comes the fun part. Yeah. Definitely not something that you want to put your finger in. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, we have to be careful because there are too many sharp teeth. Yeah. Tag is in. Yep. Okay. Now we just okay. release him. Can we release the fish, guys? What do you think? Okay. Yeah. Let's release him. Thank you very much. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you very much. There you go. Okay. See you later. All right. Sam carefully monitors the array of hydrophones. This is the river with the four hydrophones, and there's the fish right there. And he's gradually moving downstream. That means so we can it see the fish? tag. It's the fish. It's our tag ah. fish. The acoustic tag system works. A new and important tool to help scientists better protect the alligator gar population. We're hoping that this sort of technology uh, will help us understand the gar better so that they can survive. It's our responsibility to make sure that these things can survive our changes to the river. The team watches as the gar swims away. Behaving normally, it heads slowly downstream to rest in a shallow pool preparing to hunt for more prey. Evidence catching and tagging is a viable method for observing fish behavior in the wild. But Jakob has yet to find evidence of mammoth alligator gar in Texas waters. On the sixth day of the team's seven-day expedition, Kirk decides to try another body of water where he's had success pulling in big gar in the past. About 90 miles from the Trinity River, Lake Sam Rayburn might hold better luck. The water is calm and clear. Good okay. cast. Good cast. Now we're fishing. Now we're fishing. The lake is crystal clear, and I would love to catch an alligator gar here, because I would be able to see the fish under the boat while fighting. And I can see some really big fish around. Jakob, Jakob, we have a run. Fish on, fish on. Yeah, it's on. It looks good, Kirk. It looks like a good fish. Yeah, it's taking the line. It's good fish, Kirk, that's for sure. Much better fish. Wow, that's a nice one. Good, man. Did you see her? Oh, man, yeah. that's a big nice, fish. Nice yeah. Fish. Definitely over 100 pounds. Coming up, it's coming up, be careful! Oh, oh man! Wow! <laughs> it almost came in the boat with this man! <laughs> that was absolutely crazy. This was crazy. She nearly got our cameraman. <laughs> yeah. The alligator gar have numerous teeth in the hundreds, who knows? We, we haven't reached in there and counted them yet. The big teeth are like a number two pencil sharpened down. And they have just hundreds of little small teeth in there. Now, the most dangerous part of the catch, lassoing the fighting gar. Cowboy style. Going face to face with yeah. razor sharp yeah. teeth. Watch your feet. Watch yourself. Come on. Come on. Watch your feet. Here it comes. Yeah. All right. Man, that's a good one. All right. Woo. Yeah. Jacob admires his catch, 
Okay, you ready? When he suddenly discovers evidence, even bigger alligator gar may still be out there. Kirk, I think there's a tank on the fish. Yeah, look, there's there a tank. tank. Yeah, there's a tank, sure is. Extreme angler and conservationist Jakob Wagner makes a thrilling discovery. That's amazing. He spotted one of Kirk's tags on the giant fish. Okay, turn it to the other yeah. side. You have a number? And the number is 1227. So that would be the 227th fish I caught. Of the 815 alligator gar Kirk has tagged and released, this is one of only 10 or 15 recaptured each year. These moments are so important for future of alligator gar. 61 yeah, inches? 61 inches. Okay. This big gar was first tagged two years ago. Since then, it's grown three inches in length and four and a half inches in girth. Important evidence, big alligator gar are surviving and growing bigger. The girth is 24 and a half. 64 by 24 and a half? Yeah. Okay. Smile. The fish is smiling. May I release it? Anytime. Oh, thank you. Maybe. See you next year again. Again, a little bit bigger and better. Nice. That's the most beautiful moment in the fishing. When you see such a beautiful fish swimming away. And you know that you have a chance to catch the fish again. But even in this prime fishing spot, Jakob's 100-pound monster continues to elude him. And the question remains, do gar of epic proportions still exist somewhere in Texas waters? On the final morning, Jakob returns to the Trinity River. So far, truly giant alligator gar seem to be a thing of the past. He and Kirk take extra care picking an ideal spot, setting their bait carefully. You take the second bait. Finally, better fish. Yeah. Setting the hook sends the fish into a frenzy. The gar goes on a furious run. Jakob has to keep the toothy giant from diving into submerged trees. One snag on a branch and the line could break. It's coming up, Kirk. It's coming up, it's coming up. It's good fish. Yeah. Oh, Man, that's a big fish. All right. Yeah. Beautiful fight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, now we have to land this fish. Yeah. Okay, let's try to get her. Definitely. Okay. Oh. She's mad. Yeah, she is. She is mad. Okay, let's do. Yeah. She's coming. I will help you. I'll try to help you. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's it, man. Oh. Oh. They know how to swim backwards. Yeah, she got out of the noose. Jakob struggles to keep the beast hooked while Kirk resets his lasso. Each extra second is another chance for the guard to get away. One more try. Okay, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Got her. Let's go, Jakob. Oh, yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah. Watch your feet. 120 at least. Ready? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Watch your feet. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Man, that's a fat fish. Much better. Thanks, man. Beautiful fish, beautiful fish. Be careful, be... What? Be careful. Stick a tie again. Okay, number 1785. Measuring these toothy predators is always a dangerous operation. With this fish, we have to be really careful <laughs> because it's not 30, 40 pounder anymore. Much bigger teeth. Oh, yes. <laughs> 74 inches. Let's get the girth on her now. The girth is 30 and a half. At an amazing six feet, two inches long, Jakob estimates this monster alligator gar weighs a whopping 125 pounds. This fish, Kirk, really looks like a fossil, like a dinosaur, like a living dinosaur. Okay, okay, I got it. Look, 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 now you can see all the teeth. Oh, now you can see, yeah, and now you can see why, why the name for this fish is alligator gar. Yeah. You see here, hanging over the front, it's like six little teeth. And that's what really cuts you when they're flopping in the boat. They don't really cut you with this because those teeth are enclosed in the mouth. 
But if you look, these teeth actually go up into the jaw above. Yep. They have holes there. I'm not going to stick my hand any closer than that because that's close enough. Did you ever try to count how many teeth are there? No. <laughs> you should. I don't have enough fingers and toes. <laughs> she wants to go back and catch another fish. Right here, just like a pelican. See? See? Yeah. It comes down? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah now, yeah. see? And she can take a big, big fish in there. Yeah, now I can as well see why it's so difficult to hook to hook the fish in the mouth because it's 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 only oh, bone. Everything here is bony. Okay, I'm gonna come back here and help you with the tail. Okay. Okay. Come on, baby. Up. Yeah. Nice fish, up. Nice fish. And finally, we have our big alligator gar. Nice fish. Thank you very much one more time. Yes, sir. It was great expedition. Thank you. You too as well. What a great encounter with one of the last living dinosaurs on our planet. It's good to know that such a beautiful fish, one of the biggest freshwater fish on our planet, can still live close to our civilization.